Well, welcome everyone to our fall webinar series, especially in dueling campuses with GIS. This is the first of our three webinars focusing on spatially enabling campuses with GIS. We'll focus on bringing the utility information into GIS so you can leverage solutions to quickly configure our GIS to manage electric, gas, sewer, water, stormwater, and other utilities on campus. Our solutions add new capabilities to existing implement implementations and tie into partner solutions to meet your specific needs. I'm Justin Anderson, Smart Campus Operations Lead on the education team here at Esri. I've been with Esri for about seven years, and my focus now is to help campuses around the world utilize GIS to operate more efficiently and effectively. We also have Brian Baldwin, Senior Solution Engineer on the education team here at Esri. He's waving. And our guest presenters today are John Young and Mike Parkin from Patrick Engineering. So a quick look at today's agenda. I'll start with some housekeeping items here and a brief overview of the webinar series and today's content. And then I'll turn things over to Brian and he'll, he'll walk you through some of our ArcGIS utility solutions, provide some examples and show you their connection to smart campus operations. From there, John Young and Mike Parkin are gonna take over and discuss more about how to get started and some project examples they've had with higher education customers. And then I'll jump back in and review some of our Esri resources you can utilize to help align with our Esri team, our utility solution, and our partners. Following that, I'll review some action items you all can take or if you'd like to get started working with our teams, and then we'll open things up for Q&A. So a few housekeeping items. If you have questions, please enter them into the chat box. Uh, there is a raise hand button, uh, but uh, if you'd please enter them into the chat box, that'd be great. We, we do have staff monitoring the questions, uh, so they can either respond directly back to you. Um, Brian or I can respond back to you. And if there are things we don't get to or can't answer at this time, we'll make sure to respond to you directly in an email following the webinar today. All microphones will be muted. We will have a Q&A session at the end today. We're hoping to have around 10 minutes for that, fingers crossed. Um, the webinar and slides will be made available to everyone, hopefully within a couple of weeks. And there will be a survey that we'll ask you all to complete at the end. Um, I do ask all of you to please complete that survey. We do make changes to these webinars based on your feedback. So it does provide us with some valuable information. All right, Brian, next slide. All right, so beyond the housekeeping stuff, as many of you already know, Esri has been the global market leader in JS technology for the past 50 years. We're innovative. Today, Esri software has deployed more than 350,000 organizations, including the world's largest cities, companies, and higher education campuses. We're also user-centric. We're committed to serving our users and customers. We seek a deep understanding of your challenges and work together toward viable solutions. We're also research-driven. We spend more than 30% of our annual revenue on R&D. That's how much we believe in advancing and shaping the future of GIS. We also have 49 offices worldwide and employees from 73 countries. Esri is a global company. We have 11 dedicated research centers that are at the leading edge of GIS innovation. All right, next slide, Brian. So again, welcome to our fall webinar series. Uh, this is the first of the three spatially enabling campus utility data. So the purpose of this webinar series is to show out of the box GIS solutions for campus utilities and public safety teams to digitally transform campus operations. Each webinar will highlight some key areas for expanding the use of GIS solutions and workflows to support a variety of campus stakeholders and as repartners supporting our higher education customers as well. The focus of this first webinar is spatially enabling campus utility data. Organizations getting started can be the most challenging phase. Utility teams face changes in every area of their business. They work hard to adapt to and leverage digital technology. Yet, they often face today's challenges with yesterday's methods. In the struggle to remain effective and efficient, utilities look to advanced technologies like ArcGIS for the latest in utility mapping and spatial analysis. As many of you know, GIS contains all the elements needed to solve many utility challenges and includes tools to help you leverage digital maps and apps. The system maintains key information, analyzing and distributing it to everyone that needs business intelligence, 
through a system of record, a system of engagement, and a system of insight. We can help you get the most value from your utility assets. GIS uses location to fine tune asset management. It provides fresh insights into planning, performance, risk assessment, monitoring, and associated costs, which you'll learn more about today. Using location intelligence, utility staff can discover patterns and trends that simple reporting cannot detect, improving overall utility and asset management results. So with that, I'm now gonna turn things over to Brian, our senior solution engineer, to provide a deeper dive into our configurable solutions and tie all this into how smart campus operations work. Brian, it's all yours, man. Awesome, thanks so much, Justin. Um, so yeah, great to meet everybody. Um, fun to see a number of familiar names um, and faces. So thank you so much for joining this series. Um, as Justin said, there'll be a survey at the end. Please let us know if there are topics or things you'd like to see, or if there are certain things that don't hit the mark, or other topics you'd like us to explore in the future. You know, the point of these is is for you, this, this audience, to be able to get information you need um, to help you kind of make decisions going forward. So I've been with Esri for about eight years. Prior to being on the education team, I worked with our utility team. So I'm excited to be talking and spending these next two um, webinars talking through the ways that um, campuses can better use GIS to help them solve um, utility challenges because it's a really interesting landscape that you all have to deal with. And so the goal of this section is to do a couple things. It's to show kind of a getting started. So some very um, simple solutions that can have a lot of value, easy to deploy, I'm gonna walk through a demonstration of those solutions and just show you kind of what that foundation can look like to get started. So the first slide I wanted to walk through is just to level set some of the common challenges. And at times, it sadly, it feels kind of like a broken record or, or I almost kind of know um, what folks are gonna talk about or say as their challenges on a campus. And um, it, it obviously differs from university to university or campus and school, but these are some of the common ones that come up time and time again. Uh, aging infrastructure, obviously the pipes, the wires, these things in the ground, and some of the campuses out there that have been around for you know, even 80 plus, 100 plus, <laughs> some 200 plus years, are dealing with things that, you know, they don't even know what might be in the ground still. And the thing that boggles my mind occasionally is again, when I worked on our utility team, we were focused on, you know, one or two types of commodities, you know, gas or an electric operator. For you all, you have sometimes 12, 13, 14 different, you know, utilities that you are managing and having to understand. One of the other biggest challenges I see a lot is the aging workforce side, or just you know workers that have all of this knowledge and information in their heads, and the second that they walk out the door and retire, all that information and all that knowledge walks out the door with them. So how to better capture that information and ensure that it doesn't just leave the university the second those, those workers do. Data quality, and I'll, I'll touch on that one in a second. But that, that touches the aging infrastructure, that, that goes back to the workforce side as well. It's just what kind of information is available today? Maybe it's in CAD, maybe it's in Excel, maybe it's in Revit. You know, maybe you already have some pretty advanced data sets, but how can you start pulling all that information together to make better decisions? And then just the resources, obviously being time constrained, monetarily constrained and staff constrained, how can you deal with you know, those constraints and still feel like you're moving forward? For some schools, and I'm not saying everybody, but you know, this could kind of be their campus utility mapping platform. And I still see this occasionally at a lot of universities. You know, if I need access to a map or somebody is, is curious about where valves are or underground infrastructure, they have to go find the CAD sheet or they have to go dig through a map drawer and find where that information is. You know, it's not in one centralized digital place where they can just access that information. And the bottom picture there is kind of a joke, but also a reality that we see a lot that, you know, this is what a mobile map is. It's the ability to have that paper map, you know, pull it up out in the field and reference a location to try to find assets. And, you know, this is the reality, but 
the ways that GIS can kind of help reshape this and start digitizing some of these problems can help you know, move things forward really, really quickly. And again, it doesn't need to be a huge investment of resources or time. There are simple tools and simple solutions you can get in place to kind of help you start getting some of these questions and problems answered. So for some individuals, and I know a lot of you on the call, this is not the case, but for some, it's still a question of, isn't GIS just a campus base map? And for many people, you know, I'd say 10, 15 years ago, that's, that's what GIS was. It was, a, it was a paper map that lets you see streets and roads and some infrastructure, but that's all it was. So GIS has changed a lot in the last few years. And some of these examples, you know, broaden outside of the utility world. And I think it's just good to be aware of the ways and the workflows that GIS can be applied to on campuses, because obviously it touches the realms of public safety, um, you know, working with the student body, that could be travel or parking. Um, a one that I love on the bottom there is tree inventories. So it's these kinds of solutions that are not just a paper map, but provide a way to get spatial information out to anybody who needs to access that data for their jobs. One or two of the examples I wanted to point to on this slide is one that I love on the far left. And this is just a simple visualization. And this is showing the age of the network for water infrastructure. So helping this community, community start to understand where do main replacements need to take place? Where do we need to prioritize where those investments need to, to happen? Because obviously on a campus, you know, some of these pipes, some of these wires have been in the ground beyond their kind of lifespan. And so it's great to know those material types and where those are so you can have a holistic view of planning moving forward. And the other one in the middle, and it's a piece of technology that um, you know, I'm certainly a huge fan of and love is the, the dashboarding tool. And it's not something that just needs to be used for COVID dashboards, as is the, the case on the bottom, that classic COVID dashboard from Johns Hopkins. But the one in the middle is showing sewer conditions. So by having more attributes tied to your pipes, your assets, anything that you have in the ground or that's above ground, you can start to really build out these dynamic reports and visualizations of, of what the state of your assets look like. So to really build out an asset inventory, and again, to prioritize where investments need to take place, to track and monitor um, inspections that are happening in the field, there are hundreds of different ways people are using those dashboard tools. So again, GIS has moved beyond just paper maps. It's mobile, it's dynamic dashboards, it's 3D. There are so many different ways you can use the tools today. And the one thing I like to remind everybody in these calls is the fact that you probably already have the licensing in place today to do everything we're going to show you, you know, during this call. That obviously I, I completely understand there's still an investment of human resources and time and maybe hardware that's required. But in terms of software licensing, you have everything in-house today if you have an institutional agreement that provides you the ability to do pretty much anything you want on the operations side. So the licensing you know, changed, um, kind of modified a few years back where there's this distinct uses on the academic side, there's use cases on the operations side, but they're rolled under the same licensing vehicle. So if you have a license on campus for academic, you probably have operational uses available to you. And so just ask your account manager, or reach out to Justin or I, and we can talk with you and let you know exactly what you might have in-house already. So we showed the ways that GIS has changed. It's doing a whole lot more for campuses, you know, beyond just even the utility space. And the one reminder I like to, to put in here is, again, that for utilities, it can obviously play a huge role in asset and data management. If you already have an asset management system in place, GIS can help be that kind of spatial system of record that ties to or that works with that, that asset management system. Or for smaller campuses or others, you know, GIS can actually be that asset management system at times. But it's GIS doesn't just type, you know, play a role in asset management. 
it also touches all of these other distinct fields and workflows and areas. And there's a lot of value of having a strong foundation of your utility information in GIS because it can go over into all of these other areas. The one I'll mention, and I'll, I'll actually call out two of these, is uh, field operations. I think uh, every other week I hear the same story of, you know, we're going to do a dig on campus and we want to make sure we don't hit any, you know, fiber lines or water mains or you, you, steam, you know, you name it something that's buried in the ground. And so is there a way that I could have on a phone, on a mobile device, just a quick way to verify, you know, what might be underfoot right here and quickly share that information with contractors? That's one simple, very common use case of getting your utility information into GIS. And another one that I love here is the regulatory compliance for, you know, gas, for electric, you know, age of pipe and the reports that you need to put together yearly to understand what those assets look like in the ground, rather than spending weeks or sometimes, you know, hopefully not months, you know, trying to build out, you know, what are the material types, what are the age of those assets? You can have all that information already in the GIS and have an automated report built out to just push out and build out that kind of information. So you can just share it with users and regulators a lot more quickly. And the issue is there's also a lot that's been happening and changing out there over the past few years. And all of these different fields and these different workflows are things that relate to the information that you're mapping and capturing and the ways that GIS can help in all of these other areas. One that I've seen time and time again and is becoming you know, more um, at the forefront of people's thoughts and minds is the sensors and IOT. So I have that as a bullet over on the far right-hand side. You know, can I have my GIS information, have a view of the entire campus, and also start to understand what some of the real-time performance metrics are you know, within that pipe or that wire or that transformer bank and do those kinds of integrations? And that's where GIS can be that hub. But we're kind of jumping ahead of ourselves. You know, that would probably be something that in the, the next webinar we'll dive into a lot more detail on. So with all this in front of you, hopefully everybody on the call, you know, isn't you know just slamming their head against the desk with a migraine. And a lot of people are just asking, you know, so what should I do? What are the next steps? And how can I just get started and get my information into GIS, get it into kind of a spatial view to start managing and using this information? So we've broken this down into three steps. And so the one that we're gonna be talking through um, and I'm gonna be showing a demonstration of in a minute is one called Data Management for ArcGIS Online. The next steps in the next webinar where we're gonna be talking about the utility network. And please, if anybody has further questions about you know, what the capabilities are with these two different foundational solutions and approaches for modeling and managing your network information, feel free to follow up with us. You know, I'll try to lay it out clear clearly so you can understand you know, why you might want to start with the data management side and what you'll start to gain or what the utility network starts to get you as you move in that direction or move forward. So the data management for ArcGIS Online solutions are available for all of these domains that you can see listed here on the far right-hand corner. So right now, you can go up to ArcGIS Online and you can download pre-configured solutions for water. So this would be kind of domestic water, water distribution, for stormwater, for sewer, for gas, for electric, and for communications. So these solutions provide you a couple different key things. And I've broken it down into three buckets to help walk through it. So the first one is a network model. So all of these give you a schema or a database to load all of your information into so that you don't have to sit down at the table and from scratch start to figure out, you know, what kind of, do I need to capture the age? Do I need to capture date of installation, material types? You know, we've defined all of those things by working with a number of utilities over, you know, a dozens of years. And also they provide editing tools, you know, an ability to capture information. So you can either load in information you have from CAD or you have in, you know, just GIS as simple features. You can migrate information in, or you can even use some of the mobile tools to go out and capture information directly. 
The second piece of this is visualization as well as analysis. So baked into the solution are symbology, you know, icons and defines kind of pipes and lines and wires for all this information. So you don't need to build out your symbology for your maps, which oftentimes can take a, can take a lot of time. Also, all of this information is hosted. So in the name, it says here in ArcGIS Online. So what we provide to you is the ability to not need to kind of manage and have all this information, you know, on premise provides and kind of takes it, makes it a little bit lighter weight of managing the infrastructure. So it's web and mobile, so solutions for both of those sides. And there's also reports built in. So I showed a couple of the dashboards and some of these are just baked into the solution. So when you hit deploy, it will actually build out a pre-configured dashboard for you that'll utilize all the information that's part of this model. And the last piece that's obviously really important is the architecture and security. So you can lock down exactly who's able to see and access all this information, who's able to edit if it's no one or if it's just one power user, or if you want field users to just kind of provide simple updates in the field, if it's a inspection or you know, material types or you know, whatever else you wanna let someone do some updates for. So it's up to the administrator to lock it down however it makes sense for your organization, but you have that complete control. So rather than continuing to talk about it, you know, hopefully it's kind of clear in your head of what you get, but I'd love to run through a quick demonstration to show you what it actually is and what it can look like for your organization. So I'm starting here in ArcGIS Online, and this is just the landing page for my hypothetical Esri University. And so from this, one spot, if people haven't gone to it or are not familiar with it, is this little old kind of keypad icon up here, which is the app launcher. And so from this, you can get access to story maps, to dashboards, you know, the other built-in web applications. But there's also an option here called solutions. And this was added in fairly recently, so people might not be familiar with it, but this is an awesome resource to jump into. And so by selecting this, it will then jump you into the ArcGIS Solutions site. So within this web page, you have the ability to go through, and you can see the number up here, there's 111 solutions, which are templates, maps, applications, pre-configured, and you can deploy them in just one click to your organization. And I definitely recommend that people go through and look at you know, things because we don't have a, a check, we don't have a box here for higher education. But obviously there are workflows, there are solutions that you know, go and cross kind of that boundary of higher education with you know, utilities, um, you know, public safety, state and local government. So you know, look around in here and even search for different topic areas that might be of interest. Um, one simple one that I'll, I'll click on here is public safety. And so if you want to look at a solution for special event operations, and if I click here on this view details, you could read a quick summary of this or any of these solutions. And if I hit get now, this will then deploy it to the RTS online organization I'm logged into and set up the maps, the applications, the templates, and the data sets that I can then load my information into. So the one we're interested in, and I'm gonna show, is this water distribution um, for ArcGIS Online. So I'm gonna be showing the water one, but again, we have these out there for electric, for gas, for storm, for telecommunications. There's, there's six different um, commodities that this is available for right now. So by hitting Get Now, this would then, as I just said, load all this information, the maps, the applications, into my org. And so a great way to show you how this all gets deployed and what's available is this story map, which we're gonna actually have as a leave behind for everybody as well. So I'm gonna scroll down and what gets provided or what gets pushed into the organization when you hit that deploy button. So this is a quick snapshot of what is actually built out and configured. So for the office staff, there are five applications that get configured. And for field staff, there are two separate applications. There's a project in ArcGIS Pro to be able to migrate your data or manage the information and capture data or even do your edits. 
there's an editor in a web application. There's a viewer in a web app. So you can see the assets, you can see your pipes, you can see your valves and you know drill into those things with queries. There's a dashboard pre-configured and also a way to do a map notes application. This is a great app, a very common workflow. When someone's in the field, something looks like it's wrong or it seems like the valve is not in the place where it is on the map, they can make a quick note, kind of a quick digital you know, copy to say, something's wrong here, somebody needs to go do an update or check this out. So here's what the application looks like on the mobile device. So using just the out of the box field maps application from Esri, you would get the template that lets you then go out and capture new features or even do edits to your features if you loaded your asset information in. So you can see here the user is editing the, the asset ID. They just captured a new feature. They could take a photo. You could put attachments on this. It captures the created date, um, who that user was. So you have that track record of that trail to see you know, who's doing updates, who's doing edits, and what information are they capturing? And now that user is capturing a map node. So was something damaged? Is it missing? Um, and then they could go in and actually connect this main. So this one is an example of actually going through and capturing that, di that data in the field, you know, just using a mobile device. And rather than using the GPS that's built into your iPhone or your Android, which I'm sure is a first question, you can tie it to an external receiver if it's Trimble or um, you know, Ike GPS and a number of other um, vendors to get a higher, higher accuracy. Here's a quick snapshot of that web-based editor. So after you have all your information captured and edited and entered in, you have just a simple web application to go in and do those edits and manage that information. The most commonly used application will probably be the viewer. So this provides out-of-the-box ways to do queries, searches, you know, even have searching based on asset IDs pre-configured for you here. So where's a valve or where's a main? Um, and I want to see all the valves that were installed between this set of time or that are of this material type. Some really simple queries that can be configured and delivered. And the companion to that, that web-based viewer is the viewer that would then also be in the mobile device. So this is using field maps again, but is a map that's configured so that editing is not allowed within this view, so that people just have the ability to see the information and walk through it. And then the last application, or the second to last is the map notes. So this would be that ability to see those notes, see those edits that got captured in the field. And then lastly, the one I think that's the most powerful is this dashboard. So again, by clicking to deploy the solution with one click, this dashboard, all of these applications get built out. And now you have summary statistics and summary information for everything that you have captured in your network. In this case, it's just water but these same dashboards could be then deployed for every single one of your commodities on campus. So a recap of the demonstration. So we looked at the ways that the data management for ArcGIS Online tools could be deployed for a lot of these different commodity types, water, storm, sewer, gas, electric, et cetera. So they provide you a number of different things out of the box. So that data model for your network modeling, as long as as well as editing tools, the symbology, visual, visualization, pop-ups, you know, ability to put photos and attachments on these things as well. And also that ability to control all the security that you want. And the one thing I didn't really mention there, but is part of this, is the solution I just walked through that sample, as well as any of the other ones you see up in that site, you can deploy as is, you can use them partially, or you can extend them, integrate them, you can modify them. And although it's not really clearly captured in the name of the solutions, that water one for ArcGIS Online could also be deployed or copied on-premise if there are issues with security or there's concerns about having some of that information up on ArcGIS Online. But again, if you have a question or concern about that, just reach out and let us know. We'd love to, to talk to you about it.
So lastly, before I wrap this up, I think there's three key things in, you know, as you're thinking about this and as you're moving forward with your projects or your plans for getting all this information into, into GIS or to a spatial view. So first, in terms of the conditions for success, it's making sure you have the right people lined up. And the point here is that we'd love to be able to help you. We'd love to be able to help have these conversations. So if you have an executive sponsor, if you are acting as the champion, if you need some help understanding what some of the value could be and how you can help make that pitch or make that argument, just, just reach out and ask us. And we can help either just provide you with some slides or some foundational um, information or even jump on webinars or calls with you. And also if you need, you know, the, the human resource side is obviously an issue. So if there needs to be additional staff, um, you know, from Esri Professional Services or through partners, that's certainly an option as well. For this one, the mindset, I think are some really great bullets to just keep in mind and remember. And the first one that I didn't even mention at the start of all this, and is probably the most important thing is, what is the outcome? What are you trying to do when you're moving all this information into GIS? And that's really the heart of, do I move to the utility network? Can I move to this ArcGIS Online kind of lighter weight utility model? So what are you trying to achieve? What are the goals? And so after you clearly understand that, you can come up with your plan and then start to move forward from there. And then lastly, here are some, some five steps that we think of when we think of the workflow of getting a project like this up and going. And for me, the first one that's probably the most important is again, back to that business value of just what are you trying to achieve? What is your strategy for using location and what do you wanna get out of it in the next one year, the next three years, the next five years? And what's that path for you moving forward? When you have that established, you can then build out your plan, get an initial operating capability established. That could be a demonstration. That could even be the ArcGIS Online, those lightweight um, data management solutions. You can operate and expand on that and then start to revisit. You know, are you meeting your, your goals? Is it what you've deployed kind of in line with your strategy and go back and refine it? So I just covered a ton of information. And the way that I like to think of this is you know, you don't have to do it all in one shot, but if you're still managing your spatial, you know, utility information with this kind of um, database structure, and these are still your mobile maps, there are some simple steps you can take to move you forward. And if it's just getting a dashboard deployed that gives you summaries by material types, by diameter, by installation date, that is at a full campus view, that's an incredibly valuable tool to have in your pocket for both day-to-day -day operations as well as long-term planning. And so some of these getting started tools, the ones I just showed in that demonstration, again, it's a, it's a one-click to deploy those templates and you can you know, move at your own pace for migrating data in or even capturing data in the field on a mobile device if you wanna just build out a smaller proof of concept for it. So it's the licensing is there for you and there's some great ways that you can just get started. And again, if anyone has questions about those solutions or the demonstrations, please just feel free to reach out. We'd love to jump on a call with you and talk through it. So with that, I'm really excited to introduce John Young and Michael Parkin. Uh, Patrick Engineering has been a fantastic Esri partner for a long time, and they have been boots on the ground working with um, a ton of campuses and utility customers. And they've also had their own direct experience, um, you know, which you'll hear from them obviously, as part of being on the other side of the fence with campuses and utilities. And I also wanna thank Patrick so much for stepping up. We had um, a campus or two that we're gonna present that kind of weren't able to present due to some last minute um, you know, issues. And so Patrick has pulled together an amazing presentation that shows some of their work with campuses and you know, what some of the great tools are that are in place for how Patrick could also assist um, universities and campuses by starting to think of how they can manage and map their information in GIS. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you, John. Awesome. And really excited. Take it away.
Okay. Well, thank you. And um, that was a, a great lead in. And I mean, hey, sign me up. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's see here. Let me go ahead and find the right screen to share. And we'll jump into it. All right. So can everybody see my screen pretty good? Good to go. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, thank you, Brian. Um, thank you, Justin. Thank you, um, Esri, higher ed team. Uh, we appreciate uh, being invited to join you guys today and to help kick off uh, this webinar series. Um, we look forward to sharing um, some of our experiences. And you know, while we strongly believe that uh, ArcGIS uh, should be a vital part of your utility operations program. Uh, my name is John Young. I lead ArcGIS and, and asset management practice at Patrick Engineering. Um, I myself had a, had a pretty long career with, with Esri, which I very much enjoy, and I'm very much enjoying um, being on the Esri partner side as well. Um, at Patrick Engineering, we are a, a longtime award-winning Esri business partner, and we are nationwide. Uh, we are a whole service firm, so this is from engineering to design to construction uh, to technology solutions that are focused primarily in, on utility, transportation, and industrial infrastructure. And um, I'm really happy to, to have uh, be joined by my colleague, Mike Parkin, today. Uh, we were thrilled to have Mike join us uh, following a 20 plus year career uh, serving um, higher ed institutions, both MIT and Harvard. Uh, Mike also worked for Esri back in his career as well. Uh, yep. Mike brings a, a wealth of direct owner operator knowledge to our team, and he's helping us to deliver a complete range of digital campus solutions and services that, that leverage the power of GIS. And uh, in the interest of time, I will be walking through the presentation today, and then Mike and I will both be available to answer questions that you can type in the chat um, at any point in time during, during the presentation. All right, so at, at Patrick, we do serve a wide range of customers. This includes a number of um, higher ed institutions, municipalities, uh, government installations, um, each with um, some size or variation of, of campus environment. Um, so very similar to, um, if not identical to those that for you, of you that are attending here today. And um, you know, with that in mind, I'll just go ahead and stroll right over to the topics that we're gonna cover today. And so we'd like to dig a little bit deeper uh, into the challenges uh, that Brian laid out a little bit earlier. I thought that was a, a really a perfect, um, perfect introduction there and, and very representative. Of the challenges and then we're going to shift over into um, solutions that we're helping our clients overcome um, and or that we're using to help them overcome their challenges um, as well as some real world examples and I think you'll see a lot of tie-ins with the solution options that Brian was showing that Esri offers. All right so high level challenges um, like Brian mentioned aging utility infrastructure also just as Brian mentioned he kind of showed the extremes there's a data vintage and age and type. So folks may have paper, but they also may have a number of uh, digital versions of data, digital twins, so as-built data. Um, but it comes in lots of shapes and forms and sizes and it's stored in lots of different locations. And so just the data management fundament, uh, fundamentally is a, is a challenge and we'll talk more about that here in the presentation. And then, you know, this lack of plan and process and governance a lot of times too, when it comes to the governance and process on the business and the IT side, and um, also, as Brian mentioned, the loss of institutional knowledge. We have folks that are retiring, they're leaving the workforce. And then there, then what's happening is that folks uh, are coming into the workforce. Um, those folks actually have pretty good technological skills. I mean, they've, you know, folks are using these things. They have their smart devices and they're kind of ready for it. They're ready for the tools that will help you all um, better operationalize, you know, um, your data about your utilities and we're definitely going to talk about that too. And so then, you know, we realize that their challenge is also right, you know, that boots in the ground focus level. Um, we see it every day with the clients that we work with. Um, I mean, it's everything from I am building a new building or I need to, to actually probably add a wing onto a building or we're going to take this piece of ground um, and we're going to add a couple of buildings to it, what have you. Each time that happens, we know that we potentially impact the placement and the routing of our utility infrastructure. We also know that we're receiving a lot of design information, as-built information, 
And we want a way to, to streamline that process of pulling it together into a, a place where that data is actively managed and we can use it for operations. But that's not always the case. And so that's something that we definitely identify as a, of a, as a front and center challenge. And then, you know, then there's the look before you dig and dig safe. So we know this can be quite costly, right? I mean, um, when you're when you send folks out in the field to update some some infrastructure and they dig and they accidentally hit another utility, um, that costs money. That costs lots of times additional truck rolls, um, and then it adds up. And so we identify that as a challenge. And then you know, then there's leaks that um, cause get caused uh, or or occur. For a number of different reasons in the southeast um, where we where i sit right now we're in hurricane alley and when it comes through and it blows trees down and they puncture the ground um, it breaks a pipe it breaks a it, it hopefully it doesn't uh, break a gas line but it can and you want to be able to quickly find the shutoff valve right it wouldn't it be nice if you had an app out there where you're you've identified the gas leak you push a button on your on your app here and then within a matter of 30 seconds it brings back hey, you need to go shut off this valve, this valve, this valve, and by the way, here are the different service endpoints and customers you need to notify. Now, these are all things that, that we hear and challenges that are right in front of us that you know, we want to overcome. So, um, you know, as the webinar title suggests, um, today's webinar and in the series that is coming about, um, it's all about spatially enabling your campus utilities data, and that's a key part of the solution I agree with this, but what, but what do we really mean? You know, what we really mean is A, that we want to operationalize our data. We want it to be fully functional for the stakeholders that interact with it and have the potential to. Um, we also wanna make sure that you're able to achieve your goal to move to a truly enterprise level of, of management of your data. So a lot of us have the ad hoc and reportable um, sort of stages of management, meaning we, we have good spreadsheets, we may have CAD files, PDF drawings, or even paper, but we want to move it to where we're in a digital enterprise system at this truly managed state, because then that allows us to do a lot of the really helpful preventative uh, and predictive types of analysis once you get there. And so there's that combined with just getting helpful um, map-based apps and tools into your folks' hands. And the key here is tools that are dynamic, right? So tools that allow us when we're in the field to collect information on that smart app and immediately upon doing that, have that be reflected in, with inside of apps and tools that our back office or, our, or folks back in the office are using in a seamless way. So we work with our clients to do these things and this I, I really like the name of the webinar because it is all about operationalizing your data, but also as Brian mentioned, it's very important to explain the value up front. So we work with our clients to explain the value to their executives and those that really seek that the operational efficiencies, both from the, the, the savings of time and money, right? Let's reduce those truck rolls, the amount of money we spend on fixing our assets um, by not hitting infrastructure and having a really solid look before you dig out, things like this. And also then the real, the uh, let's just say where the rubber hits the road, we have staff, we have visitors, we have students, um, we have to keep healthy and safe and let's make sure that we're reducing and mitigating risk as well um, and what that means to the university from a, from a value standpoint. And then, you know, it, it, Patrick, the key thing that we do with our clients then hand in hand with these first two items is we, we sit down, it's time to plan, right? We need to set up a roadmap. We need to prioritize um, where we're going to spend our time. And it may, it may only be a handful of those 12 to 14 utilities like Brian mentioned early, earlier. It could just be gas and electric, water and storm, right? Um, whatever the one that's most important to you, um, we work with, with our clients to do that. We work with them to set up um, process and governance for, on the, both the business and the IT side. Um, and then I think perhaps one of the most important things is the commitment level, the co the commitment that the organization has. Um, this kind of, I liked it earlier when Brian mentioned um, the mindset side on business outcomes, things like this. Being able to lay that out so each of the stakeholders really understand what commitment's gonna take and the expectation of the organization. Once we're there, um, it's very much a, a, a stepwise process. And, and Brian alluded to this earlier. It's 
identifying and, and laying out the recipe for laying that foundation for maintaining, for getting in place and maintaining your data. It's then standing up very quickly those 2D and 3D utility visualization and data management tools. And, and that really, those first two things get you to that place to where you can very much function in that managed state. But if you're utilizing Esri's latest utility um, data model, right? You don't necessarily have to be using analytical tools right out of the box, but you're ready to be able to light those up and take advantage of them based on your highest priorities. And we'll step through some of that right now. Now, the one thing I'm, I'm, I'm typically cognizant of, um, and we're going to elaborate on approach and client solutions in just a minute, but for some of you, you may be brand new to GIS. Now, a lot of your universities, like Brian mentioned, own um, Esri and uh, licenses of Esri Art GIS. But if you're brand new, let's just keep it simple and say that, you know, GIS is going to help you model your assets, your natural and your built environment assets. But one of the key things that it's going to do is it's going to help you integrate and organize a lot of disparate and unorganized data and information sources. Once it's there, you then can take advantage of a lot of the location-based tools and analytical tools to help you manage and operate your assets of all kinds, let alone utility infrastructure, which is the topic of you know, our, our presentation today. And then, you know, I'm remiss if I don't if I don't mention this because we definitely um, hone in on this with our clients a lot. And it's that upfront planning and assessment piece where, you know, we understand that a number of you that are on the line today that are in the webinar kind of work on the right side of this graphic where your job is to help the organization organize and integrate, analyze and report with a, a, a vast number of different types of technologies, right? And that, that support the asset and facility life cycle. And then on the left side, we have a number of folks whose mission is just, I need to streamline and automate my business processes. We have planners here. We have folks that are the head of engineering. We have folks that are head of operations and maintenance. And the thing that I would submit to you all that we that we find time and time again is that, number one, we can lay out a plan for doing this, but we're focusing on our GIS here because it can actually provide that integration platform that allows you to stitch a lot of this together and deliver sometimes that one plus one equals three value. And so an integration platform for both your, you know, your utilities and your facilities data. And so in addition to that, we tend to look at um, the bigger picture with our digital campus solutions, again, with an eye to operationalizing your data. Um, Mike Parkin um, has a great way or a lens of looking at this, um, you know, because we have a broad set of categories across the campus. And if you look at utilities here, you can see that there are a full range of different types of um, themes and needs. Um, from, for the university, and we work with our clients to identify which ones are the top priorities, understanding that there are a number of ones um, that a full digital campus solution and one grounded in ArcGIS can, can support. All right, so then let's, let's get a, a little more into the heart of the matter and, and share a couple of examples here. So, you know, one of the things that we do is we, we focus on the foundation, right, for um, your you're getting to the place to where you're operationalizing your campus utilities data and establishing a master uh, as-built repository for your digital twins um, is a key to that. And so the way we do that, though, is um, for um, incoming uh, drawings or uh, designs that are coming from your, your engineers or for folks going out in the field that are having to do above ground and below ground assessments, um, we establish um, governance for that so that when those data come into that master repository, they are already natively um, location based or geo enabled so that it makes the migration with ArcGIS um, as that, uh, that system of record for the location based information um, wired up and ready to go so that you can then begin to take advantage of, of those wonderful engagement apps that Brian was showing you guys a little bit earlier. And then once we're there, we can do all kinds of things, right? Now we can integrate with other business systems like your asset management or maintenance management system and things like this. This is a stepwise progression that we, that we walk through in each engagement. 
Okay, so then once the foundation is in place, um, and this does include choosing, you know, the right data model, and we'll assume a utility network model, which may just be the physical model to start, not the one that's all logical and wired up for doing analysis, okay? Just the one that allows us to get to a place to where we can light up these very helpful engagement apps and tools, right? It's the first step in operation, operationalizing our campus utility data. But you know, there is a, a path, right? There's a maturity model, a progression or, or a roadmap. And you know, for today, um, in this webinar, we're focused on this first piece, right? Organizing and accessing your data. And so whether it's a, a utility manager viewer that has all your utilities in one place or an individual one for each utility, we know that your operators, as you can see the key stakeholders down here at the bottom, your o and professionals, your facility managers, your field operators, they, they need tools that can help you, they, that can quickly help them search and locate and find your utilities and also get a little bit of that type status and condition information, right? Um, and then once that's in place, you can begin to, to work with these other um, columns that you see on the right side. And they can come at the same time, they can come in reverse order, but you can see the, sca the stakeholders that are supported and, you know, that's the time when you're looking at, hey, you know what, I want to be able to isolate gas leaks, or hey, I want to be able to contain a water contamination event. You know, what tools can I readily um, light up in order to support that? And so we work with our folks to go through this, this maturity model and progression. So let's take a look at what some of that looks like. And so, you know, with our folks uh, and the clients that we work with, we will light up those um, configurable apps and tools, so many of the same ones that Brian just shared, to where we at least establish that utility mapping um, set of fundamental maps and tools. I can get to the attributes. Um, I've, I've set it up so that it's actually adhering to a utility network uh, data model and data sets. And that then allows me to do the quick filtering by type and kind, and I have the different you know, kinds and uh, domains or sets of, of attributes right there at my disposal, um, as well as very helpful editor tools um, that allow me to, in the office, make changes as I know that different utility infrastructure are put in the ground. And so, you know, in addition to that, Brian mentioned using field maps, wonderful tool. It's now been out for a little bit, in addition to the number of the other um, field collection tools that Esri provides. And we actively work with those because you know, it's going to be a, found, a, a fundamental tool that you enable to um, not just track a change um, in asset in the field, but also locating new ones. And so, you know, in this case, if I'm locating a gas T, I can not only get an accurate location for it, um, where I do have it plugged into like a Tremble or a GPS or a GNNS receiver, and get actually very accurate, but then I can also do interesting things like scan barcodes. And so, you know, we have folks that work, you know, whether you're working with gas lines or other ones that um, have a high degree of compliance associated with the data that are collected, where you scan the barcode and it can actually decipher parts of the code so that the make, model, material information just gets pre-populated. Now, what's nice about that, once that's done, I know that folks in the office automatically, because these are all service-based solutions, and I can work in a disconnected environment too, but once I'm connected, that information instantly goes into the system and folks in the office can see that same information that my folks were collecting in the field. So we're actively doing this, you know, with our clients and it's definitely delivering them value. You can sort of see the number of steps and things that get trimmed down operationally. And I know I've only got a few minutes here. So let me just say that, you know, in terms of utilizing construction data, um, a lot of you guys have access to construction data and you could you can likely immediately put it to work for you. Um, in this case, we're talking about um, data that is specific for a client of ours to a chiller hall. And we've been able to quickly take this information, pull it into GIS in both a 2D and a 3D form to where I can very quickly op uh, um, pull it into operational use. And so in this case, it's a chiller hall. And we know that a chiller hall is feeding a number of buildings um, and that this ultimately can take a, a um, uh, um, dovetail into the use of a utility network for district heating and cooling, right? And that's actually a key area that Mike Parking with us is, is currently um, focused on. And so, you know, with a quick set of data, 
we stand it up, we can see it in 3D, um, we can model it in 3D with, with, with ArcGIS desktop tools, we can connect it to things like operations manuals and things like this. But then probably most importantly is we can actually bring it into that um, web-based environment. And so whether it be 2D or 3D, we can enable this information for your folks that are, and folks that are even gonna go out in the field because we know there's nothing better than able to see that blue dot on your phone, know you're next to an asset, you click on it and you can instantly get the information about it. These are the types of things that we're doing you know, actively with our clients. And so I know in the interest of time, we only have a few more minutes for questions, but I'll wrap up by saying, um, I, I'd encourage you to check out this story um, it's a small municipality south of Boston, um, 10,000 service lines, electric specifically, um, where they really went from scratch, CAD and spreadsheets into GIS. It's a whole migration journey into using the utility network for electric. Um, it's one that we've been really happy and, 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 and um, proud to, to work with this, the town of Hull and Hull Light. Um, I think it'll actually cover a lot of bases for you guys if you're just starting to look at using the utility network. And um, I think with that, we appreciate your time and I'll turn it back over to, to Justin and, and the team for any questions you guys may have. Awesome. awesome. Thanks so much, John. Here yeah, I want to put my screen up again there. Oh, you got it. I turned it off there. Yeah. Take it away, Justin. All right. Thanks, Brian. So yeah, just let's quickly go over a, a few resources. Um, thank you, Brian, John, Mike. I appreciate it. Fantastic, fantastic information. This, these are great examples you know, what can be done once you're really utilizing the power of GIS, right? I mean, there's so much, so much we didn't get to. Um, but again, thank you guys for covering this stuff. So yeah, just a few resources for those who have attended here before, you may have seen this, you know, first we have our Smart Campus Operations Experience Builder page in the top left there. Lots of foundational resources, case studies, higher ed, public facing examples, you can our solutions. We've got some COVID resources on there and then direct contact information for Brian and I. We also have our, our ArcGIS solutions page, which you can see over on the right hand side. Um, we don't have an industry banner right now for education. Uh, we will soon. Um, I don't know a date yet, but we will have one. So if, if you're looking for items at this point, it's likely under the utilities banner and the solutions. Uh, there may also be some things under state and local government. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can reach out to Brian and I and we can help you find what it is that you're looking for. Uh, we also have a from CAD to GIS story map kind of walks you through taking a lot of that CAD data, uh, some of which John was just talking about and, and converting that into GIS and then determining which data model would be the right choice for you. Um, and, you know, when you're getting started, what is even the right path, right? You know, should you look at the UN right away just so you're in that data model? These are all things that we can walk you through and a lot of that information will be laid out in that story map. I have put the links to all three of these in the chat for everyone. So please go to the chat, click on the links and uh, bookmark the pages so you have them. Um, and then we also have a, a, a partner network page if you're not familiar where you can find um, teams like Patrick, John and Mike at Patrick Engineering. So I, I will add that link to the chat as well here. Um, I don't think I've done that yet, but um, but we do have a page to, you know, to find and search for our partners for specific areas. And then to just end it here, you know, if you had questions, sorry, Brian, next slide. Uh, if you have questions and you're wondering how to get started, there's, you know, there's a few actions you can take. The first one, if you know your Esri education account manager, you should reach out to them directly. Um, they can help you with licensing, they can help align you with specific solutions, they can help align you with partners, they could also put you in contact with your campus license coordinator if you're not sure who that is. So they can provide you with a lot of great information if you know who that is. If you don't, you can reach out directly to me. Um, I can either get you that information or put you in touch with your account manager, uh, maybe both. Again, we do have uh, a survey here that you know we like you all to complete. Um, and I, I think that would be uh, really helpful for us. We have used them in the past to help kind of update what we see. Um, and then Brian and I have had some discussions about building or opening up the possibility of a utility user group that maybe we would support monthly where institutions come in, talk about what they're doing. The point of this is to be informal, but 
our campus bodies do more of the talking, right? We want other campuses to hear what it is that you're doing, how you're doing it, what's working, what's not working. Brian and I can take a lot of that information back to our core teams and our, our Esri education team here. So stay tuned for that. I would say if you're interested in that, maybe go into the chat and say you're interested in a user group. It might help us gauge how many people would be looking to do something like that or support it. Uh, so please do, or we can do it in a follow-up email as well. So with that, I know we're over. Apologies to everyone. I think we're over by two minutes. Um, I did try to get to as many questions in the chat box as I could. Looks like we do have a few more. So for those who can stay on, um, Brian, John, Mike, you guys want to try to tackle a couple of these. Um, can you guys all see them or would you like me to read them? I could, I could certainly do that too. Yeah, if you see some, Justin, that pop out, you know, feel free to... to sure, to I'll just go down the, the line, just, just a couple of them here. So the first one, Brian, are the out-of-the-box solutions placing field notes, edits, management in the source, or are they in individual maps that would be reviewed? Um, so the, the map node solution that I showed would be an addition. So you'd have your kind of core utility information. So you wouldn't be making edits to that. You basically have kind of a, almost a red line or kind of a, you know, scratch data set that you're putting on top of that, but you could also relate back to that underlying data. So if you wanted to kind of create a relationship and make net map notes on top of that, you could do it that way. Or if you wanted to kind of enable it for your field course to, you know, edit some things or, you know, make updates, you're still capturing the date, time, and user of who's making edits. So depending on how many folks you have and your comfortable comfort level with that, you know, that's an option. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Niels says, wow, what a team. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, Next one, can you integrate with an existing asset database? We use AssetWorks. The answer is yes. Yeah, if, yeah. It's, if it's AIM or Maximo or you know any asset management system, that's a really common workflow doing that integration rather than you know storing that all in GIS. That's certainly for a very small utility that's possible, but it's more common to do that integration. Thanks. Uh, there's one specifically for Mike and John, it looks like, uh, with the solutions you guys are implementing for campus facility customers, are there any discoveries that come as a result of the um, investment in GIS beyond the initial scope? Any real world examples um, to show that the investment in GIS is worth it? So I do have an example um, of something like that. So for I think, we wanted to understand where our steam pipes were and steam pipe assessments and conditions. And so we went out and mapped them and put them all throughout the canvas. And then we started overlaying different layers of data. And we found out that when we took the grounds data of trees, there was an issue where trees were dying around pipes. And what was happening is that we had a leak in the pipe system that we didn't know about. And it was actually clicking the roots. And so I think a lot of times when you get these information system together and start layering it, you start coming up with scenarios that you didn't think of from the onset. So one thing that someone could do is if you have, you know, your steam pipe or hot water pipe locations throughout your campus, you could easily use the GIS tool to do a buffer of five feet and try to see if there are any trees that are within that right of way and, and see if there's been any issues with them. So I, I think once you start using location as the integrator, you're going to start kind of mixing these data sets and, and seeing these things and operations that you know you you did you heard about but you didn't have any data to prove that there was a problem yeah and i, I would say too if folks are interested in roi stories like we've done some pretty sophisticated ones on things like truck rolls so if you were just able to reduce 20 truck rolls for a look before you dig type of incident it really adds up fast and we'd be happy to share some of that so, and then for any other questions, or again, if people are interested in a community, please just put it in the chat. It looks like there's a number of folks who entered that in. That's awesome. And we'll, we'll reach out to you to try to get something scheduled in the next you know, few weeks or next month to do an initial meetup. Um, and thanks so much to everybody. This was awesome. And uh, again, yeah, as Justin said, sorry for going over time, everybody. And if you have additional questions in the chat in the past, we've kind of sent those responses back on a blog or 
you know, gotten them out to the, the folks who joined. So we'll, we'll be able to get an answer to you if you had a question. Yep, that's perfect. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. And thanks everyone for joining. We will, uh, yeah, we'll see you back here in October.